Hi all. Today's topic of discussion is hypertension. Hypertension, as you all know, it's a condition in which arterial BP is chronically elevated. Then this BP cutoff levels are defined according to their effect on patient's risk. According to American Heart Association guidelines, An individual is said to have normal BP when his systolic blood pressure is less than 120 mmHg and diastolic blood pressure is less than 80 mmHg. If the systolic blood pressure is between 120 to 129 and diastolic blood pressure is less than 80, then the individual is said to have elevated BP. If the systolic blood pressure is between 130 to 139 or having the diastolic blood pressure between 80 to 89, then it is stage 1 hypertension. If the systolic blood pressure is more than or equal to 150 or diastolic BP is more than or equal to 90 mmHg, it is called stage 2 hypertension. Systolic PP is determined by stroke volume, whereas the diastolic blood pressure is determined by peripheral vascular resistance. This peripheral vascular resistance increases during the constriction of smaller blood vessels. Then, when to make a diagnosis? That if an new patient is coming to you, then how to make a diagnosis? To make a diagnosis, there should be a more than or equal to two readings on more than or equal to two different occasions. What are the causes of hypertension? In more than 95% of the cases, we won't get a specific underlying causes for hypertension. Such patient is said to have essential or primary hypertension and the, it's the most common causes of hypertension. Its pathology is also not clear. In about 5% of cases, hypertension is found to be a consequence of specific disease or certain underlying disease. Then it is known as secondary hypertension. Let's see what are the causes of secondary hypertension. Alcohol, obesity, pregnancy or some environmental factors for secondary hypertension. What are the renal causes? Renal causes include renal parenchymal disease such as chronic kidney disease, glomerulonephritis. Here, there will be decreased GFR, glomerular filtration rate, which leads to volume overload. This there occurs hypertension. And another mechanism of action is activation of ROS system, that is renin angiotensin aldosterone system. When there is a decreased blood flow to the kidney, dexta glomerular apparatus of the kidney is stimulated and it releases renin. Renin converts angiotensinogen to angiotensin 1 and angiotensin converting enzyme converts angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2. Angiotensin 2 releases the aldosterone from the adrenal gland and causes sodium and water retention by reabsorbing them. Another action of angiotensin 2, it has an action of arteriolar vessel constriction. Thus, it increases the blood pressure. In renovascular causes, 
for example renal artery stenosis predominant mechanism of action is ras system only third co renal cause is congenital activating mutation of sodium chloride channel gain of function of sodium chloride channel which is present in the distal convoluted tubule and the condition is known as gordon syndrome mutation of epithelial sodium channel which is present in the collecting duct is known as liddell syndrome here there occurs increased sodium reabsorption by renal tubules and this increases the hypertension this increases the bp blood pressure coming to the endocrine causes the causes of endocrine depends upon the type of bp and edema which type of bp is increased whether systolic blood pressure or diastolic blood pressure and if edema present or not if the diastolic blood pressure is increased with non pitting edema then it will be due to hypothyroidism with mixed edema because mixed edema will compresses the smaller blood vessels thus increasing the peripheral vascular resistance and in turn increases the diastolic blood pressure if you found that systolic blood pressure is elevated without edema then it is due to hyperthyroidism how because increased thyroid hormone will increases the function of beta receptor this beta receptor has two function that it increases chronotropic that means the heart rate and increases the inotropic that is contractility that it increases the contractility increase contractility means increase stroke volume thereby in turn increases the systolic blood pressure another condition is corn syndrome that is aldosterone producing adrenal adenoma here diastolic blood pressure is increased without edema how the diastolic blood pressure is increased because aldosterone in long run causes the fibrosis of blood vessels it is due to the remodeling effect of aldosterone on cardiovascular system which in turn increases the peripheral vascular resistance and increases diastolic blood pressure why edema is absent if aldosterone is present there should be edema but here the edema is absent because aldosterone also causes increased extracellular fluid volume ecf volume and it causes atria to stretch and releases ANP that is atria natriuretic peptide it will cause natriuresis that is excretion of sodium in urine and prevents edema and this is known as escape phenomena another condition is pure chromocytoma here both systolic blood pressure and diastolic blood pressure is increased without edema in pure chromocytoma we will get sustained hypertension more than a episodic hypertension paroxysmal headache palpitation and sweating are some symptoms of pure chromocytoma coming to the miscellaneous cause of secondary hypertension coagulation of aorta in coagulation of the aorta upper limb is more developed than lower limb here we will get a radio femoral delay and we are not able to palpate the dorsalis pedis artery dorsalis pedis artery is not palpable here also the mechanism of action is 
cross that is renin angiotensin aldosterone system activation due to the decreased renal blood flow. Next coming to obstructive sleep apnea. Due to repeated uh, awakening during night time, the sympathetic activity of an individual is increased. So the patient presents with you with a complaint of daytime sleepiness and excessive snoring. It is due to increased sympathetic activity, thereby leading to hypertension. Then some drugs are also reason for hypertension such as NSIDs. NSIDs, they, uh, they decrease the GFR by inhibiting prostaglandins, thereby causing the volume overload and lead to hypertension. Corticosteroids, this cortisol has mineralocorticoid receptor affinity that is the mechanism of action in corticosteroid. Thyroxine overdose, I have already mentioned about it. Cocaine use, it also stimulates the sympathetic activity, thereby increasing the hypertension, increases the BP. Coming to the clinical features. Clinical features, symptoms include early morning occipital headache. The reason is not known. Uh, dyspnea, it's due to congestive heart failure. Hypertension will lead to congestive heart failure. Then you will get dyspnea. What are the signs of hypertension? Epical heave, it is due to left ventricular hypertrophy. On palpation, you will get epical heave, it's due to left ventricular hypertrophy. And on auscultation, you will get left ventricular fourth heart sound. It's also due to left ventricular hypertrophy. Left ventricle become stiff. So, you will get fourth heart sound. Target organ damage. It's the adverse effect of BP on organs. First, it's blood vessels. In larger arteries, the internal elastic lamina is thickened and muscle is hypertrophy, smooth muscle is hypertrophy, fibrous tissue is deposited, thereby making the vessel wall less compliant. In smaller arteries, there occurs hyaline arteriosclerosis, which lead to aneurysm of the smaller blood vessels. This may lead to coronary and cerebrovascular disease. What are the CNS features? CNS features include stroke. Stroke is a common complication of hypertension. It is due to cerebral hemorrhage or infarction. Carotid etheroma and transient ischemic attacks are more common. Subarachnoid hemorrhage is also associated with hypertension. Hypertensive encephalopathy is a rare condition in which it is characterized by high BP and neurological symptoms including transient disturbance of speech or vision, paresthesia, disorientation, fits and loss of consciousness. In eye, we we'll get hypertensive retinopathy. Hypertensive retinopathy, cotton wool exudates are associated with retinal ischemia or infarction. And it is, hypertension is also associated with central retinal vein thrombosis. In heart, left ventricular hypertrophy. Because high BP places a pressure load on the heart and lead to left ventricular hypertrophy. Another feature is atrial fibrillation. It's also due, due to left ventricular hypertrophy because the left ventricular blood filling is impaired causing the diastolic dysfunction thereby leading to left ventricular 
hypertrophy due to left ventricular hypertrophy atrial fibrillation occurs in kidney proteinuria and ultimately leading to renal failure then what is malignant or accelerated hypertension It is due to accelerated microvascular damage with necrosis in the walls of small arteries and arterioles. Then the diagnosis is based on the evidence of high BP and rapidly progressive and organ damage that is grade 3 or grade 4 retinopathy, renal dysfunction and hypertensive encephalopathy. Investigation include Urine analysis for blood, protein and glucose, blood urea, electrolytes and creatinine, blood glucose, serum total and HDL cholesterol, then 12 lead ECG, ECG. ECG findings of hypertension includes left ventricular hypertrophy, that is left atrial enlargement will be there, left ventricular hypertrophy voltage criteria is present, left axis deviation. Coming to the treatment. <coughs> Treatment is according to the BP rating. If it is elevated BP, we advise only lifestyle modification. Lifestyle modification include decreased sodium intake, that is sodium intake should restrict to 1.5 gram per day. Then increase potassium intake because this potassium intake will relax the smooth muscles of the blood vessels. Reducing alcohol intake and quitting smoking. Then regular physical exercise. There should be more than or equal to 150 minutes of exercise per week. And this exercise will lead to increased basal vital discharge. An important one is DASH diet. That is dietary approach to stop hypertension. That it includes... Increase intake of fruits and vegetables and low fat dietary product. Then one have to adopt their diet which is low in saturated fat. In stage 1 hypertension, ask for history of coronary artery disease. If it is absent, then lifestyle modification is advised. And if it is present, then we have to Go for, we have to start drugs, lifestyle, uh, lifestyle modification along with drugs. In stage 2 hypertension also, lifestyle, uh, lifestyle modification with drugs. Start a first line drugs. Start with any one first line drugs. First line drugs are AC inhibitors or angiotensin receptor blockers, calcium channel blockers and diuretics. Beta blockers are no longer the first line treatment except in the angina patient with hypertension. AC inhibitors which include <coughs> andapril, ramipril, lisinopril and ARBs. ARB, ARBs when AC inhibitors are intolerant or a side effect of AC inhibitors such as fried cough occurs then you can choose ARBs or better start with ARB like Termisartan, Valsartan, Ibisartan. Calcium channel blockers, which includes amlodipine, diltiazem, verapamil, mainly uh, dihydropyridines, with dihydropyridines. Diuretics such as furosemide and thiazide like diuretics. If your patient is younger than 55 years, then start with either with AC inhibitors or ARBs. If your patient is 55 years or older or black patients of any age, that is African or Caribbean descent, then start with either with calcium channel blockers or diuretics. It's a first step. And the BP is not controlled. You can combine either both. Uh, you can combine with angiotensin receptor blockers with calcium channel blockers or angio, uh, AC inhibitors or ARBs with diuretics. 
and uh, BP is not controlled, you can combine all these A plus P plus T. If need, add further dioptic therapy or alpha blocker or beta blockers.